Hello there and welcome to another video from Naughty Habit Boutique. I hope that all of you are doing well and staying healthy through all of these crazy things that are going on in our world. Um, hoping that you're uh, finding ways to navigate through these, uh, what I would consider to be some pretty troubling times in a lot of respects. Um, I, for one, have been trying to stay as positive as possible and just trying to maintain my sanity. Uh, I'm sure all of you can relate to that as well. Um, I've been working from home now for what, uh, March, April, May, June, for about four months now. And that's taken some adjustment. Uh, having my kids home with me while I'm trying to work is, is not the easiest thing to do, but it's given me a lot more time with them, which I think is absolutely priceless. Um, one of the ways that I've been trying to keep my sanity, and I'm if you're watching this video, I'm guessing you're in the same boat as well, um, I've been crocheting a lot. Uh, for the most part, I've been working from a lot of patterns that I had kind of accumulated. I don't know if you do what I do. You see a pattern out on a out on somebody's Facebook page or something and you're like, oh, I totally want to make that. So you save the pattern and then you forget that you have the pattern. Well, the last four months I've been going back through those patterns and have been kind of checking those off. Uh, my list of things that I want to make. And I've found a lot of really, really cool, beautiful projects. Um, but recently I was just kind of sitting around and I found my brain kind of going to troubling, stressful things. And what I decided to do is to pick up my hook and pick up some yarn uh, that I had on hand and just start crocheting without a pattern in mind. I just wanted to kind of create something as I went along. And it's a really, uh, really fulfilling process, I think, when you start basically with absolutely nothing and you see what your brain and what your handiwork can create. Um, so one of the things that I made and that I'm going to show you how to make today is this really cute, it's super easy and super fast, um, this really cute scrubby. And I call this the clover scrubby. And the reason I call it that, I don't know if you can really see all of the details in this. Um, it really, from the color to the shape to the little uh, kind of dimensional details, it reminds me of all of this beautiful clover that grows all over my yard. Um, and I just love clover. I think it's beautiful. It smells really nice. We have two bearded dragons who love to eat it. So it's just a, a wonderful little plant that grows uh, in, in the yard. People call it a weed, but it's not a weed to me. It's gorgeous. Um, so yeah, I guess this is where my brain took me when I was sitting around. It, it took me into the world of clover. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you step by step how to make this little scrubby. And just so you know, it can serve a couple different functions. For me, um, what I like about it, I, I like this as a dish scrubby because if you notice, it has all of these uh, kind of popcorn stitches. We There are a lot of popcorns in this um, that creates some dimension and also kind of some depth. They really absorb and hold water and they really hold uh, your detergent as well. So if you're like me, I, I hate having to use detergent and having to constantly squeeze it out and, and get more. This will soak it up and will hold it for a long time. Um, it's made from cotton, so it's really absorbent. And it also has kind of an abrasive quality to it that's going to make using it for cleaning up your dishes, your pots and pans, super, super, um, it'll be super helpful for that. Uh, another cool thing about this, another cool thing you can use this for is as a facial scrubby. Um, again, because of the somewhat abrasive nature of this cotton yarn and because of the dimensionality of it, it's just great for really kind of exfoliating your skin, getting all, all the junk off of it from the day. Um, you know, it's summertime, we're using lots of sunscreen in my house and um, just a lot of stuff builds up on your skin throughout the course of the day. If you're going to the beach or we go to the lake or the river a lot, we don't have a beach close by. Um, 
but this is just really fantastic for kind of sloughing off all the junk that accumulates on your skin during the course of a day out in the sun and out in nature. Um, yeah, so this is what we're gonna make. Another really cool thing about this is, because it's cotton, it's completely washable, which means you don't have to throw it out. You're not gonna waste your money here. You're gonna have this great little scrubby and it'll last for a really long time. And you'll spend maybe, I don't know, I don't even remember how much time it took me to make this because I was kind of in a meditative state. Um, but probably 30 to 30 to 45 minutes to make this would be my guess. Um, yeah, it has a little handle, which is great if you wanna hang it up or if you just wanna use it to kind of get a firm grasp on it and really kind of keep it stable during use. Okay, so I've spent enough time talking and it's time to make, we need to make this now. So what you're gonna need is just a, a fairly small amount of cotton yarn. I used uh, the peaches and cream cone yarn that you can get, at least for me, I get it at Walmart. Um, and the color I use is called Panorama. Now you may, I'm gonna grab this so you can see it. Um, So by cone yarn, this is what I mean. Uh, you like my little stand? My man made this for me. It's very helpful. So I can pull it and it just spins around. Um, but yeah, like I said, this is in the color Panorama. Um, I'm not sure how successfully you'll be able to find that yarn right now because the last time I checked, it was selling for about $23 on Amazon. And the reason I know that is because I ran out for a project and ended up having to buy it for $23, which really upset me. So now I have all this left over and I really like it in my kitchen. It's a great color. So uh, yeah, wanted to make some more stuff. Um, you can use any cotton yarn. Uh, like I said, I like this just because of the color scheme and you can get it at Walmart, which is super easy. I used an H hook. Um, you'll need a tapestry needle, of course, and some scissors. And that's really all you need in order to get started. So go ahead, grab your supplies and I'll meet you back here so that we can kind of take off and get a new scrubby into your life. Okay, so I have all of my supplies, have my yarn, my H hook, which is also known as a five millimeter hook. Um, please ignore my cat. Thank you, Kitty, for interrupting. I appreciate that. If that's any indication of how this is gonna go, it's gonna be a wild ride. Um, yeah, I have my tapestry needle and I have a pair of scissors somewhere. They always manage to disappear when I need them. Um, okay, so in order to make our lovely little scrubby, we're going to start with a magic ring. Um, that's going to allow you to take this center hole and close it up nice and tight, um, as tight as you'd like it to be. Maybe you want it to be a little wider open, a, a little more open than I leave mine, but it gives you the freedom. So I like to use the magic ring or the magic circle. So there are lots of tutorials out there on how to do that. I will show you uh, slow motion. If, if my way does not help, if, if uh, you just can't tell what's going on, then I strongly urge you to just go out and find a tutorial that does help you. But at any rate, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my free end of my yarn and I'm just gonna lay it across my hand with the working yarn kind of trailing off the back. I like to do, you know, five inches or so for the size circle that we're gonna make because it will make it will ensure that I have a long enough tail to kind of tug and close up my circle. So free end is laid across my hand. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the working end of my yarn and I'm gonna wrap it around the back of these two fingers and I'm gonna pull it up and I'm gonna make an X. It doesn't have to be terribly tight, um, but I am going to make an X just like that. Then I flip my fingers over and what I wanna do is I wanna take the working yarn that I just folded over my fingers and just kinda of tuck it underneath that other yarn. I pull it up and I'm gonna make it look kind of like a little triangle, just like that. Now I'm gonna take my hook, I put it through 
that hole that I just created. And I'm just gonna very gently take the ring off my finger, but I wanna make sure that I keep this working end of my yarn kind of out in front. So I slide my ring off my finger and I'm gripping those two together. And now I'm pulling, this is my working yarn, I'm pulling it to the back because this is what I'm gonna use for my yarn over. This is what I'm gonna use in order to kind of lock my ring and keep going with the project. So my uh, yarn is kind of through there. I'm just gonna yarn over, I'm gonna grab that and pull it through those two. And what that does is it kind of locks me in place. So now I have my magic circle. It looks a little wonky, but it will do the trick once you want to tighten your circle up. I'm gonna show you one more time. And this time I'm not gonna talk so you can focus on watching. There you have it, magic ring. Okay, so go ahead and knock that out and then we'll be ready to start. Okay, so we have our magic ring and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the equivalent of 16 stitches around this ring and that will serve as round one. Our first stitch is gonna actually be a chain three so I'm going to chain one. Two and three. And now to complete the round, we're going to put 15 more double crochets around this ring. To do a double crochet, in case you don't know, you're going to yarn over your hook once. You're going to insert the hook into the middle of your ring and pull up a loop with the working yarn. That will lead to having three loops on your hook. Yarn over again, pull through the first two loops, and then yarn over and pull through the last two loops. So there is your first double crochet. Again, you yarn over, insert into the middle of the ring and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. I'll do that one more time for you. Yarn over, insert into the middle of the ring and pull up a loop, yarn over again, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the last two. Okay, so at this point I have three double crochets and my original chain three which counts as a double crochet for this round. In order to finish, I'm going to put 12 more double crochets. So let's go ahead and do that and we will meet up at the end where we will join our round. A little tip, as you're doing this, you may find that your uh, loose end of your yarn starts to get pretty close to the ring and we don't want to run the risk of losing our ring. So you can just tug on that yarn to kind of close up your hole. I do that by pinching the stitches I've already made, and just giving a little tug. But you don't wanna close it all the way up, otherwise you won't have anything to work into. Okay, so just keep going. Okay, so I think I'm done with my ring. I did get a little distracted, which you know frequently happens if you have young children or pets hanging around the house. Um, so I wanna make sure that I have 16 total, um, 15 double crochets, and the easy way is just count your posts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I have 15 posts. And then there's my chain three that counts as my first double crochet. So I do have 16 stitches, which means I'm done. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna to join to this chain three, to the third chain in that original chain three. And that's what's really going to turn this into its own double crochet stitch. Okay, so you're just gonna go in. Um, another little tip, if, you're, if you have a hard time figuring out which of those chains is the correct one, you can just count back using the little V's that serve as your stitches at the top. So I count back one, two, three, Four. there's number five there, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. There's my uh, first double crochet. So that means that this chain right here is the one that I want to go into. I tend to chain pretty tightly, so sometimes it's hard for me to get into that hole and back out. There we go. All right, so our first round is done. At this point, you're gonna wanna close up that hole and this is where the magic comes in. This is what makes it a magic ring. You grab that loose end, kind of firmly hold your work and you're going to tug until it closes up. Don't tug too hard because you might break your yarn. But I just tug and there you have it. A beautiful, perfect little ring of stitches. Okay? All right, so now we're gonna get ready for round two. Round two is going to consist of a series of bobble stitches followed by some chain spaces. And those chain spaces are going to set up the framework for the popcorn stitches that come in round three. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna do a beginning bobble stitch. And we're gonna do a beginning bobble stitch because right now with my hook sitting way down here, I'm not at the right height. It'll end up kind of putting my first bobble out of shape compared to the rest of those bobbles. So in order to get up to the correct height, I'm gonna chain two. And now what I'm gonna do is, uh, basically I'm gonna put four partial double crochets into that same join. And then I'm going to pull all of those partial double crochets together into a bobble stitch. So the way we do this is just like we're making a double crochet, you're gonna yarn over and then you're gonna go into that same place where you joined. It might be a little tight, don't worry, it'll loosen up as you work. So I've yarned over, I go back into my join, pull up a loop for three loops on the hook. I'm going to yarn over and I'm only gonna pull through the first two and now I'm gonna stop. I'm not gonna finish that double crochet. That is my first partial double. Let's do that again. Yarn over, go back into the same join, pull up a loop, yarn over again and pull through the first two. Then I stop. I now have three loops on my hook. We're gonna do this two more times till we have a total of five loops. Okay, there's number four. And one more time. Yarn over, pull through the first two. Okay, so I have five loops on my hook. I yarn over. And I'm going to pull this through all five loops. And I think the easiest way to do that without splitting these is to rotate my hook so that this part is pointing right down inside those stitches. That way it's not gonna catch on any of the individual fibers. Okay, so I've rotated my hook. I'm kind of also pulling up on my hook this way to stretch those loops out. And I just pull through all five of them. And now I'm gonna give a tug to close up that space a little bit. And we're going to chain one to lock that stitch. So chain one, there we go. There's our first partial bobble. And like I said, we wanna create some chain spaces to make room for the popcorns that are going to give us kind of that dimension. So I chain one and I'm ready to go on 
to my first full bobble stitch. Now this one can be a little tricky. This first partial bobble was technically in the top of the chain three because that counts as a double crochet. The next double crochet, because we've kind of pulled on the yarn, the strands that actually follow the chain three join, it's taken this first stitch and made it pretty small, pretty tight to work with. So this will be a challenging stitch to work, but don't worry, as you put more of those partial double crochets in, it will get easier. So I yarn over and I'm gonna go into that first stitch. It's pretty tight. Just look for your post and take those top two loops. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through the first two. I have two loops on my hook, I stop. This is gonna be a little different because what we're doing is instead of working four partial double crochets, we're going to work five. That's gonna give us kind of the five stitches that form the cluster. So when you're done with your partials, you should have six loops on your hook. I'm gonna yarn over, go back into that stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. That is my second partial double crochet. Yarn over, go back in. See that stitch is already opening up for me. It's much easier now. Yarn over, pull through two. I have four loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. There's five, one more. Yarn over, Insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two. There we have it. One, two, three, four, five, six loops on my hook. And we're gonna close this one the same way. We're gonna yarn over, rotate that hook while kind of pulling up on those loops to open them up a little bit. Rotate, just kind of pull through all six. Give it a little tug to kind of pull all those loops together chain one to lock that stitch. And now we're gonna chain one for our space to make room for the popcorn. All right, I'm gonna do that one more time for you and then I'll let you guys work on your own. Yarn over, you'll notice the next stitch, this, these subsequent stitches are gonna be much easier to spot. They didn't get pulled by that first one. So we yarn over, go into the stitch and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two yarn over, go into the stitch and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, go into the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, okay? Yarn over, go into the stitch and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. One more, we're almost there. Yarn over, go into the stitch, pull up a loop, Yarn over, pull through two. There's six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yarn over, rotate that hook and pull up a little, pull through all six loops. Tug, chain one to lock, chain one for your space. So now you should have your first partial and two full bobbles. You're gonna complete that, you're gonna repeat that all the way around until you have 16 total bobbles, including that beginning. Okay, so I have worked my way around. I have my beginning bobble. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 full bobbles. And I have one spot left for my 16th. I just chain two, there was my chain one to lock and then my chain one to um, provide the space. And I'm gonna go ahead and do one last bobble. Please ignore my kitty. He just found my tapestry needle that I've been trying to hide from him. There it went. OK, 
okay? One, two, three, four, five, six loops on the hook. <clears throat> Yarn over, rotate the hook, tug up a little bit, pull through all six, chain one to lock, chain one for that last space, and now we're going to join to the first beginning bobble. If you look at your stitches, you will see that you have some small stitches, which are your chains, and you have these larger Vs, which are the actual top of your bobble stitches. This is the one we wanna to join to. You wanna find that large stitch at the top of the bobble. And that's what we're gonna go into. Whoop. There we go. You're gonna join with a slip stitch and that completes round three. Doesn't it look pretty? If your hole is opening up in your ring, you can go ahead and give a tug and close it back up, but you will do that at the very end as well, so don't worry about it. All right, so we're gonna start round three now. <clears throat> round three is gonna include a series of popcorn stitches, and that's what's going to give it the uh, real dimension, these kind of big puffy stitches, okay? All right, so what we're going to do is we're gonna chain two to kind of get up to the right height. Chain two. And we're going to find our, um, our first chain one space right here. So there's that beginning bobble. Here's our chain one. That's where we're gonna go ahead and put these popcorns. And the way we do that is we basically are gonna make five double crochets in that spot and then we're gonna pull them all together. So five double crochets first. And these are complete double crochets. There's one. Two. Three, oops, I split my yarn. Four. And five. And now to make this a true popcorn, we wanna pull all of them together. So you're gonna take your hook out of that loop, don't let it pull out and you're gonna go back to that first double crochet that you made and go into that stitch. If you have a hard time seeing it, then just go ahead and count back five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. Go into that stitch. Now go ahead and kind of fold this back and grab that loop again. And you're going to take that loop and pull it through the first double crochet give it a tug, and now you have this really cool little popcorn stitch. See how that puffs out? We're gonna go ahead and chain one to lock that in place, and we're gonna chain one more for yet another space, which is where we're going to do our last round, which is gonna be kind of a, a seven double crochet fan, but that's not till next round, so we won't worry about it, okay? We're gonna go ahead and do the next popcorn. And again, we're going into the space. There's one. There we go. I split my yarn again. Two. Three, four, and five. Remove your hook. Go back to that beginning double crochet. One, two, three, four, five. Go ahead, go under both of those uh, little loops. Pick up that original loop. I like to take my finger and just kind of 
stick it up inside of that fan of stitches just to kind of push it forward a little bit so that I make sure my popcorn actually pops out in the front. Pull through, give it a tug, chain one to lock, and chain one for a space. Okay, moving on to the third one. I find that chain one space between the bobbles and put in five double crochets. Just really watch to make sure you're not splitting your, your yarn, which I'm doing on almost every stitch. <clears throat> There's five. Remove my hook and count back. One, two, three, four, five. Go in there, grab that first loop and Pull it through, tug, chain one to lock, chain one for your space. So that's all there is to it when you're making your popcorn round. So go ahead, you're gonna put 13 more all the way around and I will meet up with you to join to this first popcorn and do our last round of fan stitches. Okay. So I just finished my 16th popcorn stitch and I've chained one to lock and chained one for my next space. And so now all we're gonna do is join to the top of the very first popcorn. Um, the easiest way to find that, locate your first chain one space, kind of flip your work upside down. I like to put my finger in here by this original chain two and basically there's gonna be one stitch that stands out from those chain spaces. That's where you wanna go. For me, it's right here, right there in the top, okay? So as long as you're not going into any of the chain spaces, you're gonna be fine. So go ahead and slip to join. And there's round three complete. Again, don't worry if this hole is opening up, you're gonna close that at the end. Okay, so for round four, our final round, we're just going to be putting a series of fan stitches um, or double crochet fans around the perimeter or around the circumference of this uh, scrubby. We're not going to put fans in each. We're gonna put a fan and then we're gonna to slip to the next. And we're doing that so that we can get that fan to spread out and kind of sit behind the popcorn stitches, which is what's really gonna make this look like a flower. Here's this one so you can see. By slipping in between, we really get that, that fan to rest behind our puffy popcorn stitches, okay? So the way we do this is we are just going to find that first chain one space and we're gonna put seven double crochets in there. There's one. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven. And now we skip over that next popcorn and slip stitch into the chain one space right beside it. There you go, so you have this nice little fan sitting behind. In the next chain one space, you're gonna go ahead and put seven more double crochet.
three. Four. Five. Six. And seven. Skip over that next popcorn and slip into the next chain one space. Okay. So now we have two fans done. I'll show you one more time and then I'm gonna let you go to work. One, two, three, four, Six and seven. Skip your popcorn and slip into the chain one space. All right, so she's really coming along. You're going to go ahead and you're going to work your way around uh, following that sequence of fan, slip, fan, slip, fan, slip, fan, slip, etc., etc. Work your way around. I'll show you how to join, and then we will finish this lovely little scrubby up. Okay, I have just finished my last set of double crochets for my fan, um, and I should have this one last chain left. So um, we're gonna go ahead and slip to that. And when you're done, you should find that you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sets of double crochet fans separated by your slip joins to the chain one spaces. Okay, we are not going to join to this first double crochet. Um, what you're gonna do, if you like it just like this, then you're done. You're going to um, just kind of chain to finish off and sew in your ends and you have a scrubby. But for me, I like to put a little handle on it um, just to give me a little extra security. And that is really easy to make. I'm gonna obviously show you that, but I want you to be aware that you can make that handle any size. I mean, we all have different size hands. So if you find that mine is either too loose or too tight, then by all means, you can either add or take away stitches. It's no big deal. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and we're gonna put our handle on and then we are done with our Clover Scrubby. She looks really pretty, doesn't she? I'm really happy with her. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of turn our work. So we're looking at the back and I want you to chain 15. Actually, you don't have to turn it around if you don't want to. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, get a little more yarn here, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. There we go. Looks like a little stem almost. Okay, so now you do want to flip your work over. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna find the opposite side kind of where you slipped into that chain one or into that chain space. But you wanna make sure that you have four fans on each side. So here I have one, two, three, four fans. One, two, three, four fans over here. You're gonna take that chain 15 that you just made and you're going to slip that over here into the slip stitch that you put on the opposite side. So 
you just stick our hook in. Go ahead and slip. Okay, so now you have this little loop here, this little beginning part of your handle. And all we're gonna do now is kind of strengthen that so that it has a little more structure and a little more stability. And it's really easy. All you need to do is put a series of single crochets across what you just made across your handle and that will give it the security it needs. Okay, I don't do 15. I actually put 20 because it seems to pack them more tightly together and it makes it more secure. So you're just gonna grab that and you're gonna single crochet around the chain. You don't even have to go into the stitch. So just put your, loop, your hook underneath, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both. There's your first single crochet. There's two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Okay, so you're going to go ahead and keep working your way across there until you have as many single crochets as you can fit. Everybody crochets differently. We have different tensions. So if you feel like you can put more to make it more secure, that's fine. It's not gonna make any difference. If you need to do less, that's fine too. But just go ahead, single crochet across your handle, and then I'll meet up with you and we will finish our scrubby. Okay, I just finished my uh, series of single crochets. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this now. I'm gonna to join to uh, the, the original side where we started our handle. Um, and I like to join into this slip stitch right here. So we have that fan. We have our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven double crochets in that fan. And then there's this little slip right here beside it. Not into the chain space, but into that actually actual stitch to give it some security. So go in and just slip. Pull it tight. We're gonna chain one. And now is the time that we get to cut our yarn because we are just about done. Give yourself a couple inches to sew in. Just pull that through. And there you have it. All we have to do now is sew in those ends. I'm gonna do that right now. Let's see how long it takes me to find my tapestry needle that my cat knocked onto the floor. Okay, well, ended up having to get another one because my kitty seems to have run off with that needle. All right, so, we're gonna flip this over. We're gonna sew in our ends. You're gonna feed your yarn into the, oops, look at that. This yarn just is splitting terribly today. No biggie, no big deal. There we go. Okay, so when I so in this end here, what I do is I try to get my yarn down into this actual part of the fan. It'll be really well hidden down there. And I just make sure I stay in the back of my work and I just kind of feed myself through fibers until I get down there. And I, you're, you don't wanna to pull too hard when you pull it through because you don't wanna accidentally disfigure your scrubby. So I'm down here, I'm gonna go under this fan and I'm being careful to stay in the back of my work. I'm not coming out in front here or anything like that. Stay in the back, I go all the way through. Again, I just wanna get it through. I'm not pulling it so hard that it's actually changing the shape. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back the other way 
I kind of skip that first one and go under again, go back the other way. Don't pull too hard. And then to really lock that and secure it, I go one more time. I'm gonna skip that one, because if I just go there, I'm gonna pull that last round out. Um, just go under a few. Pull it so it's snug, and now I can cut that end off. All right, now for this part, you may wanna flip that handle to the other side. Just take it and fold it. That way you can really get at this center ring. All right, so this is the time when you're really gonna close up your magic circle. You're gonna tug on that loose end, put it through your tapestry needle, And what I do is I just kind of work around this ring and I pull it pretty tight, but I don't pull so tight that you break this. Again, just like with the fan stitch up above, I just try to go under these loops. I see I did this really tight, so it's not gonna be so easy for me. There we go. And you don't have to go all the way around if you don't want to, but as you're feeding that loose end through, just make sure you're giving it a little tug to keep that circle closed. I'm gonna go just a little bit farther. There we go. Okay, circle's nice and closed up. Now I'm gonna go back the other way. If I can get in there. Again, I'm making sure that I stay in the back of my work. Now I'm gonna go this way one more time. And that really, oops, that really gives you a secure finish. There we go. Snip that end. And put your handle back where it belongs, and there you have it. Your scrubby is done. Yes, I really like these. They're so pretty. It really does remind me of the clover out in the backyard. I love it. So again, you don't have to do the handle if you don't want to. I like it just for that extra security, but she's perfect just the way she is if you don't put the handle. All right, so now I have two of these, which means I can give one to my mom because she really likes getting the, the um, kind of the first ones that I make. She likes having all of those. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy your scrubby. And one of the cool things about this is it works up so quickly that it's a great project if you wanna make something quick for a friend. Um, it just like if you're going to a party and you want to give them uh, like a hostess gift, it's great as a little stocking stuffer at Christmas. Very, very useful. Um, and if you do craft shows, again, these work up so fast and they use so little yarn that this is a, a great product to sell at your craft fairs or at your yard sale or what have you. So I thank you so much for joining in and watching this. I hope that you love your scrubby and that you find this um, tutorial useful and helpful and fun. And please remember to like this video, share this video with your other crochet friends who might be looking for an easy project. Um, yeah, and go ahead and subscribe so that you can be updated the next time I post a video. All right, well, you guys have a great day, and we will see you soon. Thank you.